Good morning and welcome to our worship on this the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. It is great that all of you can join us virtually and of course a very special welcome to all of our visitors who are joining us virtually as well. Today is also a day that we give thanks for all of our Sunday school teachers and of course they have had to pivot like all teachers have had to and be more creative with the ways in which they reach their students and so this day we give thanks to our Sunday school teachers and to all teachers that have had to do so much in order to stay connected to their teachers. We give thanks to God for you and for all of your efforts. We begin this day with prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, amen. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 17. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way, for as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is God served by human hands, as though God needed anything, since God gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one, an from one ancestor, God made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and a lot of the times of their existence, and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so, they, so that they would search for God and perhaps go up for him and find him. Though ne indeed God is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are two, for we are two are his offsprings. Since we are God's offsprings, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judge in righteousness. By, by a man whom he, whom he appointed. And of this he has given assurance to, by, to all by raising him from the dead. The second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, when neither in body or out of body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, when neither in body or out of body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except for my weakness. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think of me better than is what is seen or in me or a hurdle from me. Even considering the exceptional characters of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elevated, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a message from Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, Your grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect of weakness. So I'll boast all more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I'm content with my weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities, and for the sake of Christ, forever I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends the second reading. The Gospel for the sixth Sunday in Easter is taken from John chapter 14. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. 
In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus our Christ. Amen. A couple days ago I was on a Zoom call with some of my colleagues that I usually meet with in Mount Horeb. We discussed the usual things as pastors often do. God, Jesus, and love, those kind of things. But mostly it was good to, to catch up. One retired pastor is trying to learn how to live without his wife around. Another is in Minnesota as she takes care of her dying mother. Pastors from Blue Mounds, Spring Green, Black Earth, Primrose, and even one from Verona gather together to talk about this Sunday's Gospel. But to my surprise, nobody mentioned that May 17th is sitting to my. And I was glad to get here this morning at St. James, and I've got one mailing in my box addressed to me and Kurt, happy sitting to my. Someone has remembered. Well, growing up, I had no ethnic push in my family. My mother's side was more German, my father's more Norwegian. And even though I grew up literally a block from St. Olaf College, ethnic pride and, and whatever that was around me was not such a big deal. But as I grew up, I realized that those connections are important. In 1980, the St. Olaf Choir went to Norway, which they had done once every 25 years for some time. And it was probably there that I learned from the people, the real Norwegians, not the immigrants, of what the country and national pride meant. Sitting to my simply means the 17th of May. It's Constitution Day, it took place in 1814. And most of the parades that'll take place on Sunday, if they're gonna take place at all there, are children's parades. It's just a chance to come out and celebrate national pride. Of course, around the Midwest, there are other sitting to my celebrations. And the postcard sent to me and Kurt had written on it some remorse and grief about the empty streets that will be Stoughton this weekend. I first heard about Sitting to Mai and Stoughton when I heard my cousin Ellen play the accordion in the Stoughton Norwegian Dancers when she and I were both in high school. Her husband now is part of the Stoughton Village Players and they put on a play every sitting to my, with titles such as Buccaneers and Boonads, or Chicken of the Sea, Norskis Unhitched, or Tate Your Wagon, Lena Takes the Cake, or The Man with the Sagging Tattoo, all serious stuff. But I mainly learned about Norwegian humor from my uncle Phil, who grew up in Black Earth, and together with Dave Nelson, for about 40 years, we're a Ole and Sven team singing such great hits, such as O oh Ludafisk, Janssen from Wisconsin, Holda Come Back, There's No Norwegians in Dickieville, Home on the Fjords, We Just Say Ufta, and Just a Little Lefsa. I looked on my computer and I've collected Ole and Lena jokes over the years. I have about 100 pages worth. Now it's a big font and there's only three jokes, but still, Actually, if you'd like them, just let me know. Here's a couple hits. Oli loved Lena so much that one day he almost told her. One particular Sunday, Oli was lying in the hammock, having just returned from church. He was feeling a little religious and started to pray. God, said Oli, when you made Lena, why did you make her so nice to look at and so round and so pleasant to hold? And suddenly there was a voice from heaven saying, so you would love her, Oli. Well, then why, oh, why, Lord, did you make her so stupid? Oli asked. 
And the voice replied, Oli, that's so she would love you. A couple more. And then I promised to stop. Lena came to Oli and said, Oli, there's trouble with the car. It has water in the carburetor. Water in the carburetor, Oli said, that's ridiculous. And Lena said, Oli, I tell you, the car has water in the carburetor. Oli said, Lena, you don't even know what a carburetor is. I'll go check it out myself. Where is the car? Lena said, it's in the lake. Now, of course, if you were gathered here, there would be cheers and laughter going on and on and on, I'm sure. One more. Lena, what is it you love most about me? Is it my natural good looks or my manly physique? And Lena responded, Oli, it's your sense of humor. Well, I've told Norwegian jokes, what we call Norwegian jokes around here, to real Norwegians, and they don't think they're so funny. Because the humor is actually Midwestern, making fun of ourselves. I think it's a way, a form, an art form of not taking ourselves so seriously. I can tell these kind of jokes because I'm part Norwegian American. Maybe in your ethnic heritage, you have a few of your own. After all, we all come from somewhere. We come from someone. We come from a people. And maybe you, like I, were, were a mixture. But it's good to know that we are all connected one way or another. Now, in the Mount Horeb text study on Zoom a couple days ago, we started talking about the way we in our culture still put people in boxes. It could be a cultural box. It could be a racial box. It could be a denominational box. It could be regional. And the list goes on. But to truly know someone is to take the box away, to try and understand another as they truly are. And yes, all these things are part of us, our race, our ancestry, where we grew up, the kind of family we grew up in. And yet, we are more than just those categories. But the truth is, we all want to belong somewhere. We want to fit in. We, we want to have an identity. And especially in this time of stress, we want to know what to do. And so we look to people who perhaps are like us or, or think like us. We want answers. We want answers because it is a time of ambiguity and confusion. But if there's one truth about this virus, it's that it doesn't care who you are where you're from, how successful you've been, or how many failures you've had. It doesn't look at your gender, your race, your ethnicity. It simply uses you as a host and sees you as someone who it can potentially devour. When I think about a bad virus, we have a lot of good viruses in us, but particularly this new coronavirus. It's the opposite of who God is in our life. A virus doesn't care who you are, but God cares very much who you are. A virus comes to destroy, but God comes to save us. A virus creates fear, whereas God comes to bring hope. And a virus takes lives, but God gives the life of his son that we might have life in him. A virus separates us, but God unites us. So maybe we can all ask on this Sunday, where do you come from? In our gospel reading, Jesus is leaving his disciples. It's a few chapters in John where he is saying goodbye to them, called the farewell discourses. And he sees the fear, and he knows their fear, and he promises them very clearly, I will not leave you orphaned. There is another advocate, meaning he's the first, the one who literally speaks on their behalf, comes to defend them, but there'll be another, not bound by space and time, the Holy Spirit. Now often we think of our lives in Christ, as we live and then we die, we go to heaven. 
But the deeper truth of our life in Christ is that God comes to us in this world now. Eternal life isn't something that happens later. It's something that's a gift to us now, promised in our baptism. And that's the news we all long for in this time. We are not alone. Do not be afraid. I am with you always. Thou art with me. All these passages are about God's communion with us in this world. This is the news we long for when there is a virus lurking around that separates us, that keeps us confused and afraid. To remember that through it all, in good times and bad times, God is connected to us and is the connection between us. And these bonds of love given by the Holy Spirit are not bound by space or time. And our Easter proclamation also proclaims that death no longer divides us or separates us either. We all feel vulnerable in this time. But rather than trying to find ways we can control our lives again, St. Paul reminds us that it's in our weakness we find our strength. Our weakness and our vulnerability allow us to look to those places, to a God who comes to comfort us, encourage us, and give us that faith that allows us to keep going. We are not orphaned. God is a very present help in trouble. And our first task is simply to surrender to that love, to rest in that grace, to let go of being in charge, if just for a time. Here at St. James, we use a word. The word is receive. Receive what God is giving. God is always coming to you. God's presence is always there. What we need to do is to open our lives, our hearts, to be present to God who is with us in love. And then God's wisdom, God's strength, and God's love can empower us. So I imagine what you're doing right now, sitting somewhere in your home, just listening, receiving. For a time in the morning or perhaps in the afternoon, you have stopped from doing. And that's what God wants us to do day in and day out, to take time, to be silent, to listen to that voice. Perhaps the world cannot see that, the world cannot hear, but those of us who have given been given the ears and eyes and heart of faith, know that God is with us. So breathe in that peace of Easter. Admit that we're all afraid and we're all discouraged. It's hard to know what to do or where to go. So it's best to start from where we are at and who we are. Who are you? Maybe you're European-American, maybe Native, African, Latino, Asian. Those are parts of who you are. But who are you in that identity that is eternal? In Christ, we are sisters and brothers of one another, children of a God who promises to walk with us through dark valleys and in difficult times. You see, Jesus promised to his disciples is the very same promise to you and to me. I will not leave you orphaned. I will give you the Holy Spirit, the advocate, and we need to breathe, inspire that spirit anew this day. So live in that love, that promise, that your identity is eternal, that who you are is not determined by someone else, even your own concept of yourself, but by a God who looks into your eyes with the eyes of love and says, you are mine. I close with the words from St. Paul from Romans 5, verse 5. Our hope will not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that was given to us. Live in that promise. Live as God's child now trusting in God's presence forever. In Jesus' name, amen. On this Teacher Appreciation Sunday, 
when we typically would be wrapping up the Sunday School and Confirmation year, we give thanks for the teachers and helpers that support our children and our youth. Thank you, teachers and leaders, for sharing your time, your energy, and your faith in this important role of nurturing our children's growth and relationship with God. A special thank you to Holly Parker for her leadership and time in educating our youth of all ages. St. James is blessed and grateful for each and every one of you. Hi, I'm Holly Parker. I'm the Director of Youth Education Ministries at St. James. And on behalf of all of the children, youth, and families at St. James, we would like to share a special blessing for our Sunday school teachers, our confirmation teachers, and all of those who have so generously shared their time, their talents, and their hearts with our children and youth this year. We love you, we miss you, and we thank you. Blessed are the teachers, taken from a poem by Rhonda Barno. Blessed are the teachers who tell the children the truth about Jesus, for they will be called the teachers of God. Blessed are the teachers who love and hug the children, for they will be embraced by God's glory. Blessed are the teachers who play like the children around them, for they will receive youthful vigor. Blessed are the teachers who embrace talkative children and boundless energy, for they will hear God's joyful laughter among them. Blessed are the teachers who listen to the children's concerns, for God's heart will be revealed to them. Blessed are the teachers who teach the children to pray, for they will experience God's power through answered prayer. Blessed are the teachers who lead the children to save grace through Jesus Christ, for they will have treasures in heaven. Blessed are the teachers who pray to God for open heart and mind, for the Holy Spirit will speak the truth in love. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises, to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. We especially remember the family of Alfred Gerbitz as they mourn his loss. We also remember the family of Reverend Brent Christensen as they mourn his loss as well. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray, amen. Please join with me in praying together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia.